Hey guys, welcome back. Today is Wednesday and you know what that means. Today's episode five of One Quilt from Start to Finish. If you're just joining us, we are taking a quilt pattern from the very, very beginning, fabric choices, size that we're making, all that stuff, and we're doing it from the beginning all the way to the end, binding, labeling, the whole nine yards. And so the stage that we're at right now is we have begun to cut some of these um, prints and coordinating fabrics for our quilt. The quilt that we are using, uh, the pattern that we chose, was voted on by everybody in the crafty crew, and this was the uh, the overall winner was Shipwrecked, which is a pattern by the Sweet Tea Pattern Company and Jennifer McClanahan. What we love about the pattern, it's got some big open spaces where you can feature some of these really big prints and you can not have to cut them up into little tiny pieces. And so that's what we love about Sweet Tea Pattern Company and, and Jennifer McClanahan's patterns. So what we've done so far is we've fussy cut some of our feature prints that we chose in episode number two. And I taught last week how I center the block on point so that my feature is kind of in the middle. Now, I like to say that there's no quilting police. So I'm just showing you the way that I do it, whatever works for me. And these are techniques that I maybe learned in one particular way and kind of tweaked to make it something that, sorry, that I could understand and that I could follow along with. And I'm here to do the same thing for you. So what I did was I used a light box. I centered my print on the light box and I found the eyeball middle of the picture that I wanted to use. And I put a blue dot of water soluble marker on there to remind me where the middle is. I then cut out this big chunk of fabric. And when I was ready to trim my block to size, I did not fold it on point the way it's meant to lie in the quilt, but I folded it in half based on that center mark that I created with that water soluble marker. That allowed me to trim my block up. I was able to divide the finished block measurement in half and then trim my block up to size. And now that bunny lies directly in the center of this on point block. So I did that with several different prints. Um, I did that uh, as best I could with some of the prints that are a little bit, uh, not quite as big, they're a little smaller. So for example, um, this goldfish print, that center guy, I feel like he's looking right at the camera like, hello, here I am. And so I used him as a center. And then I cut all of my coordinating and matching fabrics. So today we're going to talk a little bit about sewing. The next step in the pattern is basically to make this block into a square and a square almost, almost, not quite. So we're going to talk about that a little bit. Um, some of the the background fabric that I used is the fairy flake in white or fairy dust in white. I always confuse those two. Sorry, Tula. Um, fairy dust in white. And so I cut all of my background fabric ahead of time. And I have some smaller squares. And then these are the small. Yes, these are the small ones out of the two sets of blocks that I had to cut. And then these are a little bit larger. There are also some strips that I had to cut. So I just did all my cutting ahead of time. Now, just so you guys know, the pattern is available in the shop. The kit is available also in two sizes and it comes with a pattern included. So the kit will give you all of the primary fabrics, all of these focus feature fabrics and the coordinate, coordinating fabrics to go with those blocks. The throw kit is a little bit smaller. It's about, uh, I think the finished size on that one is 65 by 60. The full or double size, which is the one that I'm making, is 80 by 90, I believe, finished size. So it takes a few more fat quarters on the bigger one, a little bit more spendy, but it's a bigger, a much bigger quilt. So um, if you're interested in that, check out the link to my shop in the uh, description and follow that link along and you'll find um, the link to the kits themselves and, and how they're for sale. Um, be sure if you're wanting to sew along, you, there's still plenty of time because we've only done the cutting. So if you wanna sew along with me, go ahead and grab that kit when you get a chance, get caught up on the cutting part. These videos will be available on YouTube in full length so that you can watch them anytime you like and then you can sew along as you like. So. We're going to talk about how we're going to make this into a square and a square. And one of the things that we have done 
is um, read through the entire pattern before we get started sewing or cutting or anything. So I usually do a good read through initially before I even cut or pick fabrics or anything. I want to know, A, are there any techniques in the pattern that I'm not familiar with that I need to learn how to do? B, are there any um, secondary subcuts or things that I have to make out of fabric? Do I have enough of everything that I need? Um, thirdly, just looking for things that might be confusing or, um, again, techniques that I'm not really familiar with or language that I'm not familiar with. So I go through and I read re really carefully. Once I start my cutting, I'll read through it again, just to remember what it is that I'm doing and where I'm going with it. So the next thing that we need to do in order to make our blocks into these really pretty diamonds that get set this way in the quilt is we've got to take some of our complementary or contrasting colors and we need to do basically what I call kind of a square in a square. So it's called that because I mean, look, it's a, it's a square inside a bigger square, right? But the way we make it is actually on the corners and I'll show you that now. So what we'll do is we'll take some of these blocks. I have two of the hop to it print with these color, within this colorway. And I've decided to do one with a parrot green um, contrasting color and the other one with hibiscus, which is, these are both um, art gallery fabric, pure solids. This one's called parrot, this is hibiscus. So we're gonna make two bunny blocks. You can see them right here, this one and that one. One of them is gonna have a green contrast and one of them is gonna have the hibiscus contrast. And so the first thing we need to do to make that happen is we need to take these guys. And for those of you beginner quilters, solids generally don't have a wrong side. They're, they're the same color on both sides. No matter which way you flip it, it looks exactly the same. Kind of like batiks. Batiks are the same way. So they've got no right or wrong side. So we're gonna take these solids and we are going to lay a ruler from point to point and we are gonna mark these, whoops. Of course it was gonna fall off the table. I'll be right back. Okay, back, <laughs> got it. So we're gonna mark a line from one point to another, just like so. This is a water soluble marker. So I just marked my little diagonal line on that. And I'm gonna just repeat that process for the other three squares. So we have four all together that we are marking right on that diagonal. Now, depending on what kind of block or shape you're making, sometimes we mark blocks like this and we sew a quarter of an inch on each side. That's generally when we're making what we call HSTs or half square triangles. In this case, we are gonna sew right on that line. So we mark in our very last one. And before I head over to the sewing machine, I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about placement, how I place these on, pinning or not pinning, and then we'll head over to the sewing machine and we'll sew them on, and then we'll talk about the trimming and the pressing afterwards. So that's my fourth block. I've got all of my blocks marked up on that diagonal line. And then I am going to take my bunny block. And I think that you can see the whole thing here. And I'm gonna take one of these marked pieces and I am going to place it here this way. Now, here's what I do to test and make sure that I've got my line going the right way. When I sew this on and I trim it up, it's gonna go this way because my line is going from my left to my right. If I put this block on the wrong way, when I fold it this way on the line that I'm gonna sew on, I'm gonna know that that doesn't look right. Do you see how that lies? That's not the right way. So, I turn it and then I fold it on the drawn line again and I can see that that's the right way. So that's kind of how I test. Did I put it on there the right way? Is it gonna give me the end result that I'm looking for? 
when you're making this and the pattern is really super clear about it so that i love that about um about jen's patterns it's really really clear where to place these blocks you're not going to do two side by side you're going to do opposite ends of the block so top and bottom left and right not side by side and if i do the same thing again on this one and fold it over i can see that the bottom one lies correctly. I'm trying to do look backwards on the camera there. See that? That's exactly how it's supposed to go. We will sew these, we will trim them, we will press them, and then we'll do the other two. So there will be an overlapping seam right here, so you don't wanna sew them on before you trim them. You'll do two and trim, and the other two and trim, and you'll have a perfect block. It doesn't matter if you do the top and the bottom or the side and side to begin with. Whichever place you wanna start is fine, but you're gonna do top and bottom or left and right, and then trim, press, and then do the ones that haven't been done yet. So follow me over to the sewing machine. Let's put this bad boy under the needle, sew it up and get it trimmed up so I can show you how that goes, okay? Hey guys, so we're at the sewing machine now and I wanna go over some basic sewing tips. No matter what machine you have, it's really super important that every so often as you're sewing, and what I mean every so often is if you're making a really, really big quilt, you may wanna stop after two days of sewing for a few hours at a time and clean out your bobbin case. If your machine is a machine that gets oiled, like I have a Juki, I have to oil her, oil it at that time. Um, if your machine doesn't take oil, it always needs cleaning. So you can clean the bobbin case in the area that you can reach. And we may do a tutorial somewhere, somewhere down the line on exactly how to take this apart and how to clean it and what to use. Um, but in the meantime, don't forget to take care of your sewing machine that takes care of you so well. Make sure you're cleaning after every bobbin change. Uh, make sure you're changing your needle after every new project. Just so you have a nice sharp point, a good straight needle. Sometimes they get bent and you don't even know that they're bent until you go to change them and you look at it and you're like, that's not really straight. How did that happen? It can happen in bag making when you're going through thick seams. It can happen in a myriad of different ways. As a matter of fact, a sewing machine tech once told me that sometimes needles come in the package brand new and they're bad. It just happens. So depending on my project type is what needle I use, but I use, usually like to stay right in the middle and be neutral, not too thick, not too thin. I use a thicker needle if I'm bag making, but if I'm just quilt piecing, I'm 80-20 or 70-10 girl. That's what I use. Sometimes it's Schmetz, sometimes it's organ needles. It just depends, in my opinion, on what's on sale and, and who's carrying it and where I am. I usually try to, um, even though I'm a quilt shop owner, if I am traveling, I love to frequent local quilt shops, see what they have and support their business. I believe in supporting each other and I think that's the way it works best. So. Needles, whatever you're comfortable with, but I think 80-20 for piecing, 70-10 for piecing, sometimes really good depending on the thread that you use. So then thread, which is a good segue, right? Um, I used to try to coordinate my piecing thread um, with whatever fabric I was using. And as much as I love my Aurifil threads, which is what I carry in my shop and what I use personally for my own piecing, um, and English paper piecing, hand sewing, everything, Aurifil is my, my jam, um, piecing with the color that goes with the fabric was just, it just got to be problematic. I'm not, again, no quilting police, right? You want to, you know, be piecing red and white blocks and use red thread and then change to white or change to whatever, that's up to you. And you're more than, um, you know, you, you can do you in, in this, in this case, there is no quilting police, as I like to say. For me, going with a neutral thread that matched with everything and didn't really stand out too much in any kind of piecing was really super important after a while. I have lots of quilt tops that need to be quilted. I love to piece. This is Aurifil brand thread. It is a 40 weight thread, and this color is 2600. It is a pale, pale gray, and it just kind of blends with everything. I know other quilters too who rely on this particular color of thread for piecing. I also use one of the off-white colors. Let's see. Yep, 
2021 is another one that I use. So if my fabric is really super pale colored, I will use the lighter one of these two. Otherwise, generally speaking, 2600 is my jam for piecing in general. I've got it in my bobbin. This is a new spool because I had to, I ran out of the other, the other spool was over. So if you just watched, I just pulled the bottom off of this big spool and I stuck it back on. I was like yesterday years old when I found out that that was the way to tack the thread down. So when you're storing it, it's not unraveling all over the place. The bottoms just come right off. You wind up your thread and then you put the bottom back on and it kind of pinches it there. So I'm just gonna thread my machine real quick. And we're gonna talk about piecing this block and making that really pretty um, on point set block in our shipwrecked quilt. It's gonna be super fun. So cleaning your machine. I know that there are um, really great brushes out there for machine cleaning. I'm here to tell you, we have these fabulous little silicone buggers that I carry in the shop. And my brushes, I used to spend very little. I didn't like very super spendy brushes for cleaning the machine, specialty things. I always find that I can substitute that with something else. And so I bought e.l.f. brand makeup brushes and I would cut the ends off and file it down so that it was short enough to go under the throat space. I have a really small space right here. So I'd fit it under there and I'd clean out my, my bobbin case. We have in the shop these little silicone duties and I'm gonna show them to you in just a second. And they just, everything sticks to them and they're in several different shapes. They're great little gadget to get in there and clean the machine since we're talking about that. So give me one quick second. I'm gonna be right back and I'm gonna show those to you. Okay, so here they are. These are the nook and cranny cleaning tools and they look like this. I'm gonna hold that up so you can see it. They look like that. They're just these little kind of, they're soft and flexible. And when you stick that in that bobbin case, it's like a magnet for all the dust bunnies that are in there and it collects them all. You can twist them around in there. They're like the perfect little, I mean, they look kind of like mascara applicators, I think. Yeah, they kind of sort of remind me of a mascara applicator, but it's what makes them kind of grippy in there. So these are great gadgets. We do carry them in the shop. They're called Nook and Cranny Cleaning Tools by um, the Gypsy Quilter. So I love these guys. They're super great. I use them in my machine when I clean it. Super handy, really easy. So we're gonna now grab this block. And just as a quick recap, I am gonna start at the top and bottom corners of this block. So I'm gonna move this this way so you can see what I'm doing. I place it, I'm gonna double check myself. So I'm gonna fold it on that line, the drawn line there, and I can see that it looks right. That's how it's supposed to lay out. Okay. I'm gonna stick it right under here. And here we go. That's one side done. You can see I just sewed right on the line that, that I drew diagonally across the block. I'm gonna flip the block over. Well, I should say I'm gonna turn it around. I'm not flipping it over to this side. I'm just turning it around so I can get to this corner. That's the corner we're gonna do next. So you do opposite corners. Again, I'm gonna lay this square onto my block where I want it to be. And just to double check that it's in the right position, I'm gonna fold it over on that line. And yep, that's exactly how it should lie. So now we're gonna just sew this puppy on.
I always like to start slow in the corners because even though I have a straight stitch plate on the machine, sometimes it just kind of pokes that fabric right through into the middle there. So I just go really, really slow at the beginning and really very slow at the ending too because I do find, and I think I mentioned this in, a, in my Christmas tree table runner video that sometimes if you start off quick or end quick, it kind of does this curvy thing at the end and yeah, that doesn't work out so good. So we're gonna go nice and slow in the beginning if you're a very novice quilter um, and you have a newer machine, your machine probably has a speed setting. I like to set mine kind of medium so that I can pedal to the metal, but it won't go any faster than the medium speed. So we've got these two on here now. So now we're gonna go back to the cutting table and we're gonna trim and press and we'll be right back. All right guys, so we've sewn on our two corners. We're gonna go ahead and trim those up. And what I do is I take my Creative Grids ruler and there are markings on this ruler for half inch. I think you can see that. It's got a little perforated line here and that dashed line is exactly a quarter inch. The other side of the ruler has the half inch. That's what I love about these Creative Grid rulers. They think of all the common things you're doing with the ruler and they just make it super easy to do that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay that quarter inch line right on the seam that I sewed, just right on the stitching. And then I'm gonna trim this extra triangle off from this block. That leaves me with two very cute little, oh, look at that, it's like he's peeking over the edge. Two perfect triangles to then I can make half square triangles out of it. I can use it for English paper piecing. We are gonna talk about what we're gonna do with the waist or the trimmings from this quilt because I have a special idea for all of the extra fabric. And I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna make pillows to go with this quilt. But we'll talk more about that in further episodes. Just keep that in mind though. Save all of your scraps. Don't throw anything away. Just hold on to all of it. And then we're gonna actually use those scraps afterwards to see what happens to this collection of scrappy things that are left over, okay? So we trim those off, Let's stick them over there. I'm gonna turn it and just do the same thing on the other side. And then I'm going to press these. Now, Jennifer suggests in her pattern to press open. I don't always press open just because as I'm long arming, when I stitch in the ditch, I really don't wanna have that issue where I'm actually stitching into that open seam. So I am going to um, follow her instructions for some of the blocks. I'll press some of the, them open to avoid bulk. And then some of them where it's uh, really a lot darker than the contrasting fabric, I may press to the dark side, which if you are a new quilter, you will hear lots of people say, seams are pressed to the dark side. You never press your seams open and you don't press them to the light. While I appreciate that little bit of wisdom, because it does help in a lot of uh, situations, I do think that you have to use your better judgment. Sometimes printing, pr pressing your seams open is super important because if you've got lots of um, seams coming together in one spot, you're gonna have a considerable amount of bulk and pressing to one side is gonna make it really hard to sew accurately. It's gonna make it hard for your long armor to long arm it well. So just take that into consideration. If there's gonna be a bunch of seams coming together in one place, you may wanna press them open as the pattern calls for. So I'm gonna give this a quick press. I'll be right back. All right, guys, we're getting there. Look how pretty that looks. Oh my gosh. All right, so you probably already figured out that what we're gonna do next is just the same thing on the other two sides of the block. So I'm gonna go ahead and place these. And I know it seems like a little extra step for not much gain, but do fold them on the line. Just double check yourself. You'd be surprised. Uh, sometimes for me, one of the hard lessons was never quilt when you're tired, never quilt when you don't feel good. Never try to squeeze in piecing and quilting in between a multitude of other things that you're doing because something is gonna suffer. Either supper's gonna burn, your seams are gonna be off, <laughs> something will happen. So quilt in a good space, 
quilt in a good headspace and your mistakes will be a lot less. But always double check if you can. If you can take a look at it and make sure that it's right, do that piece because you'll, you'll be so thankful afterwards. So that looks like it's placed correctly. I'm gonna fold this one as well on the line. We're gonna first line it up here with the corner. And then, yep, that's exactly where it's supposed to go. So we're gonna head over to the sewing machine, sew these two on, and I'll be right back. Okay, so the other two corners are sewn on. We just have to trim now. So we're gonna do the same thing we did the last time. I'm gonna lay that quarter inch mark right on the stitching. That also kind of shows you how straight you've sewn a line. My corners always go a little bit kind of haywire, but not too bad, they're getting better. So I'm just gonna trim this off. We're gonna have quite a pile of triangles left when we're done. And then I'm gonna trim this one, same way. Like so. And then I'm gonna give these a quick press here. Let's see if I can put you here while I press these open. I'm gonna show you kind of how I, how I do that. So first thing I do is I give these a quick press. Just put the iron on. I know it's just sewn, but something an old quilting instructor taught me and I always do that. She said we do it because it sets the thread. If anybody has another opinion on why we do that, please put it in the comments, um, cause I'm not really sure. I use my fingernails to open these seams. I've decided to do, to press this one open. So we're just gonna open the seams here. Give myself a little space. And again, when you're pressing, we only press, we don't iron. So I'll use like, the tip of the iron to kind of open that up. Give it a little squirt of just water. Lay that iron down. And I just really pat it until it begins to open up. And then we've got a nice open seam just like that. So I'm gonna do the other side not to burn myself <laughs> on that iron. The fabric gets so hot too. Sometimes you're running your fingers along it. Like I used to, I like to use my nails to kind of press it open and man, does it ever get hot. So just be super, super careful, especially these quilting irons like the Aliso that I have and others, they just get super, super hot. Then I flip her over and I give her a quick gentle press and then let's go back over here how pretty is that isn't that just gorgeous it's just a complete block so I now have to do this to all of the subsequent feature blocks that I have for the size quilt I'm making because I'm making the full size quilt it's going to be 15 of these so my next one that I'm gonna do is our other bunny, and this one's gonna have the hibiscus corners. So I'm gonna put some of these together. I'll stop and explain the steps that I feel need a little bit, oh, crazy hair, oh, crazy hair again. The hair is crazy, y'all. <laughs> so I'm gonna stop and, and go every so often and point out some things if I feel like you need some, some extra help. But remember, if you're still fussy cutting these fabrics, um, definitely do the dot method. So remember that's put the dot in the middle of that, of that um, print, wherever you want that center to be. In this case, I wanted that center to be right where that blue dot is. This is water soluble marker. You cut the bulk of the fabric out. And then when you're finding your center to trim your block up to size, you're gonna fold and make sure that your fold is right on that dot. And that's what makes the fussy cutting turn out so well. So I'm gonna sew a few more of these. You can watch as I mark blocks and sew everything along. Um, please remember, this is a series, so we're gonna have one of these every week. They're gonna be saved on YouTube. You can watch them anytime you like. Kits are available online. Um, thank you everybody for your comments and for adding. Also, also, 
Just want to put this out there. Thank you so much to the person who commented and told me what best press is. It's not starch. It is sizing. So it's something a little lighter than a starch. Um, it works so great, guys. I'm here to tell you, I've used all kinds of you know, um, starches. When I first started, I was using Niagara spray starch, and then I was using um, Stay Flow starch, and I tried everything. And really, best press, it just really works. It works great. It does exactly what we want it to do, which is give a little bit of bo body to the fabric, but not make it really super stiff as a board. And it, no flaking, too, when you iron with it, which is also great. So watch along as I make some more of these. Thanks for your support. Thanks for following along. This is gonna turn out so pretty. I just know it. I'm super excited about it. So let's make some more, huh? Okay, so I'm just gonna finish marking up the rest of these blocks and I will sew them all together. There's about 15 of them, so there's quite a few to do. Um, I'll sew them all together and then I'll post some pictures on our Facebook group, Soul Stitcheries Crafty Crew, so check them out there. Um, and I look forward to seeing you next Wednesday for our episode six of One Quilt from Start to Finish. Thank you so much for your support, guys. Make sure you check out our YouTube channel. Like and subscribe so you can watch all these videos. And don't forget to hit the bell so you get notified every time a new video comes in. Thanks again. See you next Wednesday.